send in the clowns. Those daffy, laffy clowns. Send in those soulful and doleful schmaltz by the bowlful clowns. Send in the clowns. That's right. Send in the clowns back again on another fantasy football podcast. Uh, great draft last weekend, and I've got a little bit of a review for you. Um, started off the way we start most podcasts with a little waiver action as uh, yesterday, or actually this morning. Uh, we thought it was going to be kind of a crazy waiver period. didn't really turn out to be that wild. The spending wasn't too out of control, but uh, the go over a couple of the good and the bad ones. Um, I thought, uh, in my opinion, $35 from Mark Ingram from Jason Plotzker. I should suppose I should probably speak up because I think Plotzker is having some hearing issues right now, but $35 for Mark Ingram to me uh, is a little bit of an overspend. The Saints backs are just like the Green Bay running backs are difficult to uh, rely on. So you know, just can't be too sure that Ingram's going to be that good, and that's a lot of chunk. That's a lot of money. Um, beyond that, speaking of Green Bay running backs, Ben uh, has always been a very large proponent of the Green Bay running backs. Went out and spent four dollar four dollars on Jonathan Franklin. Um, you know, that's kind of a wild card at this point. I frankly wouldn't have done it. And then Smith uh, saw fit to waste two dollars each on Roy Hilu with an exclamation mark at the end, and Dexter McCluster, who just cannot. Uh, you know, we just can't quit him. Uh, as far as some of the good waivers go, I really liked Brian Deutsch. He went out and spent $15 on Ryan Broyles, who I think is a really good sleeper. He was out injured all of last year, and I think he can bounce back pretty solidly. Uh, I liked uh, two pickups, actually, that Denenberg made. He spent $4 on Bryce Brown, and he got Elshon Jeffrey for a dollar, who I uh, was definitely thinking about drafting. I think he's primed for a big year. So a couple of waiver reviews there, but... Talking primarily about the draft, uh, you know, it was a great draft. I think it was a little bit different this year, obviously, kind of a different pace um, due, uh, obviously, to some of the halftime entertainment that we had lined up. But even beyond that, the fact that there were varying budgets and there were certain, you know, a pretty high number of players that had been kept, uh, you know, just getting into the draft, it, it kind of led things to be paced a little bit differently. So I think you saw there were some some, some winners and some losers. Uh, I'll go through a couple of draft grades here. So going by division, um, start obviously LBP with the Lane Bryant division. Uh, looking at Krause's draft, I thought Krause did a pretty good job. I mean, he had uh, Eli and Roethlisberger uh, being keepers coming in, so he's pretty set at quarterback, but did even more to kind of give himself some security with Sam Bradford and Jake Locker. I think Bradford at $17 is a big-time steal, so I thought that was a good move by by uh, Kraus. Um, you know, he went upside kind of with his running backs. He's got David Wilson. He's got Eddie Lacy uh, beyond them. I mean, he's smart to get Andre Brown to back him up, but he's, you know, he needs those guys to show up, so I would say he's a little thin at running back, but I think Richard Mendenhall uh, was a pretty good steal for him. He'll probably end up being a starter. Uh, as far as his wide receivers go, pretty terrible. Uh, Antonio Brown and Roethlisberger obviously have a pretty good hookup. Tavon Austin is a rookie with the Rams. He hasn't really proven anything. And then, you know, beyond that, he's got Vincent Brown. Uh, and, you know, he's got two tight ends. He's got Witten and Finley, who I hate Finley. But, you know, I think Krause uh, earned himself a, a pretty solid B- minus, uh, just because he's strong at quarterback uh, but uh, needs some help with some position players. Uh, looking at Plosker, uh, Plosker obviously was uh, dealing from a position of strength. He made some smart trades to uh, sort of fortify his team before the draft even started. Uh, he went in, he spent big money on Tom Brady, uh, and he picked up Tony Romo as well. I think Brady obviously was a great pickup, even though it was very expensive, but, I mean, that's why he sold out last year. Um, I think that drafting Darren McFadden is going to be a serious mistake. Uh, I think that he overspent a little bit on his quarterbacks, but obviously got some guys in there who will put up good points. Uh, where Plotsker is really strong, where he did a good job of securing some good players, is uh, with at wide receiver. He's got Des Bryant, who I think might finish the year as the number one overall wide receiver. Uh, he's also got Brandon Marshall, who obviously is pretty sick. And then uh, Torrey Smith is an old Plotsker favorite. Uh, even beyond that, he's got Kenny Britt, who I think is prime for a pretty good season, uh, kind of bouncing back. And then actually Percy Harvin for $5 is sort of a, uh, you know, 
know, a pretty solid keeper pick, uh, kind of a steal there uh, to get a player like that for $5. I mean, this year might be kind of shot for him, but he's probably coming back. Uh, I would give Plotzker a B minus, similar to Kraus. I think he did a good job, but he, you know, had a, a lot of money heading into the draft, and outside of the keepers that he that he lined up for himself, I think his draft maybe could have gone in a different direction. Um, if you look at my team, I actually was one of the rare few who uh, kind of filled out the whole roster. Just didn't want to leave too much up to uh, to Fab. Um, you know, my team, uh, my keepers, I thought were pretty obvious with Luck and uh, and Marshawn Lynch going into it. Um, but you know, I, I thought that I did the best I could. I uh, as uh, is kind of a bad habit of mine. I'm very prone to sleepers, prone to going upside guys. So if you look at my team, you know, I went T. Y. Hilton, DeAndre Hopkins, Jordan Cameron at tight end. And uh, Daryl Richardson behind as my third running back, Shane Vereen, uh, you know, guys like that, Cordero Patterson, Chris Givens, these are all upside guys. Ryan Tannehill, these are all sleepers. Uh, the odds of all of the sleepers working out for me uh, is probably pretty slim. So I would say, you know, I, I think I did an okay job putting my team together. My big purchase was uh, going out and getting Matt Forte for $70, which, you know, I think putting Forte and Lynch together gives me a pretty strong court running back, especially with Richardson uh, just being named the, uh, the starter for the Rams. But beyond that, you know, my team might be in a little bit of trouble so really frankly due to the fact that my team is made up of entire uh, almost all sleepers um, I'm gonna have to give myself an incomplete incomplete grade on that uh, if you look at Oaks, I thought Oaks did did a pretty good job um, you know he obviously was had the strongest uh, pre-draft portfolio if you will with almost $350 and then keeping uh, Doug Martin and keeping uh, AJ Green um, so, you know, he was in, obviously he was in pretty good shape. I think he did a really good job picking up Steven Jackson. I like Steven Jackson, even though he, you know, had to spend a, a pretty good chunk of change on it. Um, but, you know, one smart thing Oaks did was, you know, not just uh, go all in for this year. He actually did a great job of lining up keepers for next year with Manuel and uh, Geno Smith. I mean, those are sort of the two big keepers, and he's got both of them. So at the very least, those are good trade chips. Uh, for this season, uh, he went out and got Jimmy Graham, who, as we all know, is is sort of the 800-pound gorilla with uh, tight ends. He's obviously the dominant guy, and at receiver, Oaks is absolutely stacked. He's got AJ Green, Randall Cobb, Roddy White, and then on his bench, he's got Sidney Rice and Kendall Wright, who are both uh, you know pretty good guys. So um, I think Oaks is in really good shape. I would give Oaks a solid B plus. All right, moving on, looking at the Schindler's division. Uh, if you look at uh, Ariel's team, I thought Ariel uh, did a fantastic job. He, you know, lined up some uh, some steals at wide receiver. Uh, he got Stevie Johnson for nine dollars, which I really liked. I thought that was a major win for him. Um, and then he got uh, Mike Williams as well uh, for only three dollars. Who Mike Williams just signed a big contract extension. He's kind of the guy out there. Uh, and then getting Anquan Bolden for a dollar, I thought was a real steal as well. Um, however, there is sort of one major issue. Uh, if you take some time and look at Ariel's draft, I mean, you know, of course he was coming in with a keeper in RG3. Um, I think he was smart also to keep uh, Adrian Peterson. But if you look specifically at one uh, very important position on his team, you would have to say that beyond RG3, Ariel left himself in the QB scare zone. That's right, the dreaded QB scare zone. I mean, he did a good job uh, afterwards drunkenly uh, trading for Alex Smith with me. Um, you know, I think Smith is pretty good. Uh, I, that was uh, What I was going to mention was a pretty good draft pick by me. But, uh, you know, obviously I think I made out pretty well on the deal with, uh, with an extra $30 for next year. So still having RG3 as your one and Alex Smith as your two, um, you know, is not really an enviable position because RG3, as we know, could go down at any time. So uh, nonetheless, beyond just being in the QB scare zone, um, he's done, you know, a fair share to kind of shore that up. I think the rest of his team is great. I mean, at running back, he's really strong with AP and Trent Richardson, with Stephen Ridley as his third. So I'd have to give Ariel a solid A-. Uh, if you look at Brian Deutsch, uh, you know, Deutsch, I thought, did a pretty good job. Um, you know, he got some good deals. Um, I don't know why he, you know, he drafted, I believe, the least number of players of anyone in the league. He, he really was not particularly interested in filling out his roster. I think he could taste that uh, Joe's Crab Shack uh, already and was just ready to get out of there. But, uh, you know, did a good job. Uh, he's got uh, Flacco and Cutler who, you know, is a little <laughs> – that's testing it a little bit, uh, almost in the QB uh, scare zone, really getting close to it. But Jamal Charles and Mojo Drew uh, with Ronnie Hillman as the third I, I like. Um, you know, I think uh, Mike Wallace was one of the biggest steals of the draft. I thought getting Mike Wallace 
for $21 was great. I think Wallace is going to have a big season. Um, you know, he's the type of guy that getting down there and going to Miami and getting the big contract and, uh, you know, being sort of the only guy is, is going to be good for him. So I thought he did a good job, um, but, you know, he didn't really get enough players. So I've got to give Deutsch a, a C for overspending on uh, a couple of guys and, and not really, uh, you know, going too strong at quarterback. Uh, if you look at Denenberg, um, you know, uh, no offense here, Denenberg, but I, I thought you probably had the worst draft of anyone. I, I just don't. I mean, and now you've gone out and changed up some things after the fact, which I think was smart, but drafting Michael Vick for big money to me is just mind-boggling. I don't get it. I think you made a smart move beforehand trading to secure Cam Newton, uh, but then, you know, getting Vick and, and Chris Johnson as being the bulk of your of your spending, I don't like very much. Victor Cruz is, you know, he, he's good, but there's just a lot of options for the Giants. Cruz, he just keeps you know, hitting those big plays every year, and it just it doesn't look like it's uh, you know the most reliable thing. I think obviously you you picked up Demarius Thomas before the draft, which is great. I love Demarius Thomas, but Ben Jarvis Green Ellis is your second running back, and I, I you know I, I know I uh, in the waiver review said that I, I thought you did a good job picking up Bryce Brown, but he's still a backup. So uh, running back is pretty thin for you, unfortunately. For D, I got to give him a D plus. Uh, finally, if you look at Justin's draft, I thought Justin actually did a smart thing uh, keeping Matt Ryan, even though that was a lot of money, $98 obviously is a ton, but keeping Matt Ryan smart, um, when you look at the quarterback market, I mean, you know, Drew Brees has gone for 120 and Brady's gone for 111 so Ryan for 98 is a pretty good bargain. He probably would have gone for more than that in the draft. And, you know, even if you thought that was too expensive, Justin obviously has a s- absolute steal in Russell Wilson for only $18. So I think he's in pretty good shape at quarterback. Uh, beyond that, I mean, you know, he looks okay. Okay, wide receiver is a strength for him with uh, uh, Megatron, and he's got James Jones as well, and then Josh Gordon. Uh, Pierre Garçon and Miles Austin on the bench I thought was pretty good. Uh, Antonio Gates, you know, I think he's pretty washed up, so I think he, he would have been smart to have grabbed a backup tight end. Uh, but, you know, I, I think if he can get himself a little bit more help at running back, uh, Justin did a pretty good job. I would give him a B. Um, all right, looking at the MAM, Mid- Middle American Miniature Maniac Division, uh, Billy, uh, you know, obviously went out there. He's the defending champ. He really wanted to make a name for himself, and he just dropped a bomb uh, in going out and getting Drew Brees, uh, spending a, just a gigantic amount of money on him. Uh, you know, even though I reminded Billy during the draft that he was not one of the guys who sold out last year, uh, he still uh, saw fit to make Drew Brees the most expensive uh, auction player in Corephobics Anonymous history at $120. Uh, he also picked up Matt Schaub, which I thought was pretty good. Um, I think Schaub will be, um, you know, effective. I mean, for $54 is probably a lot, but the way quarterbacks go in this league, it's nothing too crazy. Um, I thought that, you know, having DeMarco Murray as your one and Darren Sproles is your two makes him a little bit weak at running back uh, and then you know if you look at his wide receiver situation Julio Jones obviously is an absolute steal uh, but then Julian Edelman is, is his number two and Steve Smith is the number three wide receiver um, you know the, Billy's going to need to seriously work on that situation so behind a, a strong number one he's got almost nothing at, uh, at wide receiver um, you know we'll see how well that works out for him but uh, you know as long as DeMarco Murray can stay healthy and Darren Sproles is get back to the last time Sean Payton was the head coach Billy's uh, still in pretty good shape, obviously, with his, with his main man, Breeze. So, um, you know, despite uh, some of the weakness there at wide receiver, I would still give Billy uh, a C-plus for his effort. Uh, if you look at Billy's brother, Ben, Ben, uh, I thought was in great position coming in uh, w- with keepers. I mean, keeping uh, Andy Dalton and Peyton Manning, I think, is, is great for an even 100. Dalton is, uh, you know, going to be pretty solid this year, and Peyton is obviously as reliable as ever. Uh, he went out and got Arian Foster, which I thought was, um, you know, an interesting move. Obviously, at the time, we didn't know too much about his injury problem. I think I just read on Twitter that uh, Foster's coming back uh, to practice, so it doesn't sound like that should be too, seriously, uh, too serious or anything like that. So it sounds like Foster should be okay. Uh, ben took a page out of my book and went upside in his number two running back with Gio Bernard. Uh, there's been a lot of preseason hype about him, and the guy in front of him, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, is, is kind of whack. So looks like Gio Bernard should be a pretty good pick for Ben. Uh, he went out and got Dwayne Bowe for $24, which I thought was a big-time steal. And then even better, he got Cecil Shorts for only $7. I'm surprised uh, Brian Deutsch let Cecil Shorts go, but I thought those two guys were big-time steals at wide receiver. And if you pair him up with uh, Deshaun Jackson and Larry Fitzgerald, I think Ben's in pretty good shape. So So I give Ben a solid B on his effort here. Uh, If you look at who else is in this fucking division? I don't remember. Oh, Smith. Yeah, if you look at Smith's draft, Smith, I thought, you know, depth is somewhat of an issue, uh, 
particularly as it relates to injuries. You know, if you look at his wide receivers, he's got Danny Amendola and Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson had some surgery, I believe, a couple weeks ago, and Amendola is, you know, a fragile little porcelain doll, although I do love him. I think that if he stays healthy, he could be exceptional. Uh, beyond him, he's got Denarius Moore, who I know Smith is a big-time fan of and I like a lot. Um, at running back, he's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, you know, D'Angelo Williams and Bernard Pierce, both of them are, you know, uh, well, D'Angelo Williams specifically is a very unsexy pick, but he will get carries and he will, you know, produce a little bit. Uh, and then his starters, I mean, Alfred Morris is, is uh, you know, obviously pretty good. And then Ryan Matthews, I thought for $15, is, is definitely a steal. I mean, he is the lead back. There's really no one behind him. So, you know, Ryan Matthews for $15 is, is a good pick. And then quarterbacks, I mean, he was in, he was sort of a, in a, a solid position in which he could keep Carson Palmer for $34. That's a steal for a guy who's going to be throwing a lot in Arizona. Uh, and then, you know, his big purchase was going out and bidding on Kaepernick. I don't know if I would have spent quite that much on Colin Kaepernick, but, you know, Kaepernick is definitely the starter and one, one of the better teams in the NFL. So, you know, it, it, it's better than the alternative of, of having to settle for a worse guy. Um, so, you know, I, I thought Smith did a good job. As long as Ryan Matthews stays healthy and Al Morris can repeat his, his good season, um, you know, if he gets a little bit of luck with his uh, the health from his wide receivers, uh, I think Smith, uh, you know, did a good job. I'd give him a B plus. And then finally, you know, if you look at uh, Bootsy's team, I thought Bootsy actually had the best draft of anyone. Um, you know, notwithstanding the fact that he spent a pretty good chunk of change on uh, Le'Veon Bell, who now has a Liz Frank injury. Obviously, that happened after the draft, so there's no way, um, you know, you can't do much about that. And actually, I thought Bell was a great pick at the time. Um, but, you know, Bootsy was in good shape with uh, Stafford coming in as a keeper. And then also uh, Vincent Jackson um, putting on a two-year deal. I mean, got him for dirt cheap, and Vincent Jackson's been really, really productive in Tampa Bay. So I thought Bootsy did a really good job with that. Uh, you know, his running backs are, are strong. Reggie Bush, LaShawn McCoy, uh, you know, uh, beyond that, I mean, like, like I said, he's got Le'Veon Bell who's hurt, but he also has Monty Ball who's going to be the starter in Denver. Um, you know, he's, he's strong at quarterback, as I mentioned, Stafford. He, he uh, picked up Josh Freeman in the draft. And then behind, he's got, you know, guys who are not a lot of fun to look at, but Blaine Gabbert, Christian Ponder, Matt Flynn. I mean, these are three guys who are going to be starting quarterbacks. So at the very least, these are trade chips. I mean, those guys aren't going anywhere with the exception of maybe Gabbert. But Ponder and Flynn are going to be the starters for the full, for the whole season. So. So Bootsy, at the very least, has some insurance if Freeman bombs out or if Stafford gets hurt. And he also he can flip some of those guys for uh, some more depth at uh, wide receiver. Um, I thought that keeping Eric Decker, and I'll touch on keepers here in a second, I thought that keeping Decker was kind of a strange move, but obviously Decker had a pretty good year, um, and he's uh, available for a pretty low price. So uh, picking up Reggie Wayne, um, you know, the, the one player I have kind of an issue with is Vernon Davis. I, for whatever reason, Kaepernick does not like to throw the ball to Vernon Davis. Uh, but, you know, Bootsy is in a really good position to be able to pick up a, another tight end or a replacement or anything like that. So, frankly, I would give Bootsy an A+. Plus. I thought he did a great job. I think his draft is, is in great shape. So uh, that's your draft grades, draft review. Feel free to uh, take issue with it. I, I didn't spend too much time uh, planning that. But um, finally, you know, I'll leave you with a little, little keeper review. I, I thought it was a little bit more interesting this year. We definitely – had um, you know some some interesting moves. Uh, the only person who didn't announce a new keeper was Billy, so there was a lot of uh, a lot of action going on. Um, as far as uh, good keepers, um, I liked as I mentioned uh, Smith keeping Carson Palmer for thirty four dollars. Uh, I liked Justin keeping Matt Ryan for ninety eight, even though it was pretty expensive. Um, I liked uh, Bootsy keeping Vincent Jackson on a two year deal, and then uh, definitely a, I think the keeper of the year, the best keeper selection would be Plotsker keeping C J Spiller for just twenty five dollars. I think C.J. Spiller is going to end the year as a top top one or two running back. I think he's going to be incredible. So, you know, to get him for that price is pretty impressive. Uh, as far as uh, negative uh, keepers go, keepers that I did not like, um, you know, uh, I, I didn't like Ben Roethlisberger for Kraus. I, I don't think it's a very good choice, um, specifically because of the price. I mean, Roethlisberger is a good quarterback. He's definitely the unquestioned starter, so he's not going anywhere. So, I mean, it's not like it's an unsafe choice, but it's a lot of money. I mean, it's $63 to keep him, and he put him on a two-year deal. So that means that the buyout, you know, it, it's going to be $51 to buy out next year, and I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd if Roethlisberger goes out there and, and rapes someone else or whatever. You, you, you know, you got to spend a ton of money to get rid of him. Um, I didn't like Bootsy keeping Decker for two years, although you know they're really. It's not such a bad idea, but I just 
I don't. I personally don't think Decker is. Uh, it's a pretty flooded offense, especially with Welker there. You know, there's only room for one uh, sh- uh, quick white guy in that town. Uh, and then also um, Brian keeping Joe Flacco uh, for forty three dollars for one year. I don't know if it's worth it. I think Flacco is pretty happy to get paid and pretty happy to win that Super Bowl. So um, I think that uh, you know he's going to probably regret that. But the good the good news is that it's a one year deal, so not 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 going to hurt him too much. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, We will get back at it uh, in the first week of the regular season. Good draft and uh, good luck.